My journey into the world of philosophy began with a profound experience. I'm at tender age of 16. It all began with a common catalyst, a breakup. It's often during that difficult moment that people found themselves pondering the meaning of our existence. And who's better to turn to than those philosophers? So I headed to the school's library and picked the beginner's guides of philosophy. Little did I know this simple act would send me into a transformative path. The first sentence of that beginner's guide caught my attention. It says, do you want to know the meaning of life? Then keep reading this book. I will tell you at the end. In trick, I spent three days devouring its pages. It introduced me a simple version of the history of philosophy, captivating me with the story of those great thinkers and their profound ideas that have the potential to change the world. However, the ultimate answer of that beginner's guide is rather disheartening. A claim that our world is meaningless inherently. That conclusion was devastating to me. But I dug deeper into the book and realized that the book held another message. Remember those philosophers? They didn't start their own meaning in life at the beginning of their story. So I delved deeper into philosophy, reading the work of Kant, of Camus, and Nietzsche, gaining strength from their words, but also keep questioning them, all the while to searching for my own meaning in life. It soon became clear that those philosophers I encountered with did not start their journey with their preconceived notion of life's meaning. Instead, they dedicated their whole life to chasing after it. They may receive a satisfying answer along the way, but they never cease to question. Their story told me that the meaning is not something inherent, we did not born with it. Instead, we gain our meaning from our surroundings, from our upbringings, and as we grow, we will have the power to shape our own meaning in life. Through my exploration in philosophy, I came to understand that our individual's meaning is not something static. It's dynamic and ever-evolving. So, this is why I today passionately encourage each and every one of you to delve into the world of philosophy, even just a little. If my story sparks any interest in any one of you, that's great. If not, keep listening, because I will keep pursuing you. Let's talk more about philosophy. When we talk about philosophy, we could escape Socrates, one of the greatest philosophers in history. He famously, he famously stated that the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. As children, we filled with endless questions, yet we always fail to comprehend the vastness of our ignorance. As we mature, we have, the, we have acquired more knowledge, but we also become more acutely aware of those boundless mysteries that still elude us. Socrates' wisdom lies on his recognition of the limitation of our knowledge. It sounds like he's a pretty humble person, but he's not, not humble to us, he's humble to his own knowledge. Well, this concept is invaluable because when we realize our biases, we will approach our life's question more critically, which means we could think in different perspectives. And thinking in different perspectives gave us the ability to understand why other people disagree with us. Let me take a personal example. Once my grandma was ill, and she rejected to go to the hospital because she is concerned about the money. My mom was trying to persuade her and guarantee that the money isn't a problem. However, my grandma didn't listen. So I step in and tell my, uh, tell my mom that my grandma, she's a frugal person. No matter what you said, she won't listen because she don't care about how much money you earn. She cares about how much money you spent. Surprisingly, my grandma agreed with me, but I didn't stop there. Then I told my grandma, if she doesn't go to the hospital, my mom will have to stay at home to take care of her. And this is using the time that my mom used to work, which she used to earn money. This is a lot more ways than my grandma to go to the hospital. And this time, my grandma listened. This is how I step into her shoes and make her reconsider her decision. 
However, sometimes convincing your opponent might not be the best course of action. Remember how Socrates says, the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. We must acknowledge our bias to think our question more comprehensively, seeking for the most satisfying result. There's a philosophical joke that just imagine if a person came to you and tell you the field you've been working on is useless and meaningless, what are you going to do? In most cases, I think you will debate with him and refute with him about that. But when the same situation came to a person who studied philosophy, do you know how he answered? He said, oh, go learn it first, then talk to me again. And here's the funny part, when there's another person who really studied philosophy and came to the exact same person and said, you know what, I think philosophy is just useless and meaningless. This time, this person responds, oh yeah, I think you're right. So this story just illustrates that in philosophy, we are acceptable to being convinced, and also, we don't want playing with those fixed views. So, what does philosophy offer us? In my view, it offers me a humble approach in life, a path to satisfaction, and a self-awareness. When we approach our life with humility, engage with empathetic arguments, and possess a clear understanding of ourselves, we will earn ease and confidence to navigate the complexities in our journey. In closing, my journey into philosophy began with a breakup but it led me into a clear understanding of my own meaning in life. Again, I encourage everyone today to embark your own exploration in philosophy. For doing so, you will earn an incredible richness that this age-old discipline may offer you. <laughs>